Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on one of my videos. Today we're going to go through installing a bootloader called Refind on your dual boot system to allow you to easily switch between operating systems when your computer boots up. For those of you who don't know, I'm just going to quickly go through what a bootloader is. When you turn on your system, the BIOS will automatically launch you into what's called a bootloader. Now most of the time this happens in the background with the Windows boot manager and you don't even see it happening. But sometimes if you install a Linux distribution, you'll see a thing called grub and then you'll know what I'm talking about. The bootloader provides you with a list of options that you can boot the system into. So for example, if you've got more than one operating system, it'll give you a list of different systems that are on the hard drive that you can load into from the boot manager. Sometimes it's also got other options such as recovery partitions and things like that to help you recover your drive if it gets damaged. The bootloader that we're going to go through today is called Refind. Refind is a graphical bootloader that looks a lot better to Grub, although it essentially does the same thing. Refind presents you with an array of colourful icons on boot and you can select the operating system that you want to launch into by navigating with the keyboard and hitting enter. Although this is functionally the same as the Grub bootloader, it just looks a lot nicer and it's a much better way to boot into your system. Refind can be installed through either Windows, Linux or some other operating systems. Although Windows is quite tricky to do and it involves using the command prompts to mount the EFI partition on the hard drive temporarily and then accessing it. And this makes it a lot harder to configure and theme Refind once you've installed it. Instead, we're going to look at using Linux to install and configure Refind as it makes it much easier to access the files and configure the bootloader. If you're dual booting your computer, then you're most likely running some sort of Linux distro on it already. So this should be easy for you. The process is quite simple with Linux, and if you follow all the steps correctly, nothing really should go wrong. It's important to note that this should only be done if your computer has a UEFI startup function. Older systems using the BIOS startup function won't work. The easiest way to check this is just by searching either your motherboard model or your laptop model online and check the results. If you can't find your results online, you can check it using Windows. Here on my Windows desktop, I'm just going to hit the Windows key and R at the same time to launch the run application. We're just going to type msinfo. We're just going to type msinfo32 in there and hit enter. And just on the list here, you'll see it says UEFI here. One more thing I want to mention is that I will be doing my demonstration of this inside VirtualBox just because it makes it easier for me to record and put on YouTube. But the process should be relatively the same on any other computer just running it on bare metal. If there's any significant differences, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Okay, so I'm just here on Windows on my dual boot system and the first thing that we're going to do is launch into our Linux distro, which for me, that's Linux Mint. If you watched my last video, then you'll learn how you can install Linux Mint alongside Windows really easily and dual boot them both off the same hard drive. I'll put the link up the top if you haven't seen that one. So this is that Grub bootloader that I talked about earlier. And as you can see, it does work. It's fine. Um, but to me, it's not the prettiest looking bootloader. And I think we can definitely do a lot better. So you can see the options that we have here are Linux Mint, recovery mode that I spoke about earlier. And we've got Windows. And then this is sort of like a shortcut to the UEFI, just to make it easier than spamming a random key when your computer is booting up. So we're going to go ahead into Linux and it's just going to boot up. So here we are in our Linux Mint running on the same hard drive as the Windows machine I showed you guys earlier. So what I'm going to do is just open up the terminal down the bottom here. Uh, I'll just make this a bit bigger. There we go. So in here we're just going to type sudo, which will give us root privileges, which is basically just admin rights for Linux. apt, which is our package manager, install, and refind. Just hit enter on that. Depending on your connection, it might take a while to install. So we've got this message here that just says, do you want to uh, add refines to the EFI system partition? You just want to hit yes to this, otherwise it's not going to work properly. And there we go, so it should be all installed now. So once you've installed the package, you should be all good to go. So what we're going to do now is just hit our little start button down here. We're just going to reboot the system. And hopefully we should launch straight into the refined boot manager when it comes up. And here we are. So we've just restarted the system and this is the refined boot manager. So right now you're done. You can just use this as normal. Um, there are a lot of configuration options that you can 
add to this. I might do another video on that. It's really great. You can add lots of themes and colors and really customize it. You can change the icons, all that sort of stuff. So that's Windows, that main one there that's selected. Say you wanted to launch into Windows, you just select that one, hit uh, So say we wanted to remove these two EFI ones here, as they're not really used too much. We can just select it, just hit delete on the keyboard, and then we just go up here, yes. There we go, we'll do the same with this one. Uh, and now, as you can see, we've only got Linux, Mint there, and Windows. That's super nice, super easy, super clean. Um, and if we wanted to get back to those other ones, we can just go down the bottom here. This menu here says Manage Hidden Tags. Just enter into that, and these are those two that we've hidden from earlier. So you can still access them, they're just not on the front page there. Um, some other options here, this is the EFI shell that runs within Grub. Uh, most people probably won't really have a use for that. Uh, same with that one there. This is just some information about the Refine program. That's that hidden tags. This is shutting the computer down. You can also reboot and it's also got a shortcut to your UEFI program as well. So as you can see, this is refined. It's super simple, super easy to use. So we wanted to launch into Windows, so just hit enter on that and it'll launch straight into the Windows operating system. Say you were to split your hard drive up even more, create more partitions and install other operating systems. Uh, they'll just appear in refined. It's super simple. You don't even have to add them to the program or anything, they'll just add themselves in there and as you can see here we are in Windows, so we're just going to restart. Here we go, so we say we wanted Linux Mint, we'll just go into Linux there. So I'm not going to go too in depth with the customization and configuration in this video, I can do a separate one as well if you guys like that. But I'll just show you how you can access the config settings. So what we're going to do, we're just going to hit the file manager down here on Linux. Uh, we're going to go to our file system on the side here. And then we want boot and then EFI. So it's going to prompt us for our password. This is the same one that you made when you created the Linux account. It's the one that you use when you log into the profile. Then we've got EFI here, so we double click that one. And then we've got uh, all of our options here. So basically, this is booting to Windows. This is the Grub bootloader that we spoke about earlier. And then here we have a refine, so we can double click that one. So in the file here, we've got all our configuration options. And it's just as simple as either changing the value or commenting out a line. So the way that this works is each of these hashtags here is a comment symbol. Uh, so when the code runs, anything that's got a comment in front of it, it's just going to ignore that line. So as you can see, there's a little description here to help you understand what everything is. And then anything that's an actual value that will affect the, um, the program, like for example, timeout here, that doesn't have a comment. So the code will run on that line and it'll call another file in here and uh, put that value into there and then that'll change the boot manager. So that's how you can configure this system. Um, I just have a read through here. There's lots of options you can change. This is the timeout. So the way that it works is if say you don't hit enter or you don't do anything when refine launches, it'll launch the last used operating system after a certain period. So say 20 seconds was too short. We want to do 30 seconds. Simple as that. Just hit control S to save the file. And then that's changed in refine. So you can just scroll down here. There's a bunch of options. Um, you can set your own icons directory, you, you can hide some of the other options that come up under the refined operating system, some of the different menus and information, that sort of stuff. There's lots of information about this on the refined website. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description, but that's a great site. There's lots of useful stuff on there. There's also lots of resources on YouTube and uh, GitHub and all that sort of stuff. So I would just have a poke around online, maybe look at some different themes and that sort of thing. Um, if you guys want me to do a configuration tutorial, we can definitely look at different themes and things that you can do with Refine to make it look even better. Um, so here you have your icons file. So if you go into this one, uh, it's actually not going to display them. So what we need to do is just right click and then open as root. So we're going to need our root password for this. And we're going to have to go back through here again. And then icons. So now they're coming up. They just didn't come up before because we didn't have root access. These are all the icons that basically run Refine. So say you wanted to change the icon for your operating system. You can go in here and delete the old one and add in your new one. So you can see they're all just here. 
So say you're running Windows and you don't like this one, you can download a new one off the internet. Um, just go in and make sure that it's the same size. You just head to the image tab up the top here. This one's 128 by 128. I think that's what they all are. They're all sort of the same. Um, you just delete this one, put your new one in here, give it the exact same name and it'll replace that in the bootloader and you'll have your brand new image there, good to go. So there you go guys, that's basically how you can install the Refined Boot Manager on your dual boot system. It makes it super easy and simple to launch your operating system as you can see. We have our options nicely displayed here. Just hit enter on the one that you want and it'll start up straight away. So I think I'm going to leave it there for today. If anybody has any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below and I'll answer all of them. Please also consider subscribing and liking the video. I'm only just getting started on YouTube, so it would mean a lot if you could give me a little bit of support just to help me get going. If there's any other tutorials or videos that you want to see, just leave them in the comments as well and I'll have a look at making some of those or putting some information out about that. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.